Hello everyone. With Christmas shopping still going on, I wanted to do a recording to uh, focus on CPU parts, specifically the coolant. One of the biggest confusions I see today uh, with people and buying computers, even with people that know a little bit about computers, is whether or not to go liquid cooling or air cooling. So let me discuss that. Um, I'm not a person that likes to tell you what to do. I am a veteran PC builder. I recognize that any PC is to that person's preference. So I like to respect that and just give you your options. So the thing you have to look at when you're comparing whether or not to do fan cooling versus liquid cooling is overclocking. That will be the only decision um, or, and or factor to make. So if you're not going to overclock, liquid cooling is completely overkill. I assure you, fan cooling is more than enough, especially on uh, most CPUs. The only CPU that I can ever recall of um, in my seven plus years of building uh, that gave me issues was an AMD Phenom 2. I was able to keep that under control with fan cooling, just so you know. I had to buy a lot of brand name fans to manage it, but it was still doable. So keep both of those thoughts in mind. So let me help you with shopping on this end, because I noticed the reason that people abandon CPU uh, fan coolers is because uh, they say it doesn't do enough for them. And part of your problem is you're not checking the CFM. CFM is a measurement um, that helps with this. That's just how I want you to memorize it. So as you can see, I've had new egg up. We're gonna look at um, one of the confusions that can happen on websites like this. So you'll see that there's two Cooler Master models here at the very top, and I pulled them up over here. This is the specification for the one with the LED. You'll notice it says 66.3 CFM. This one, on the other hand, the one without lead, reads 24.9 to 82.9. That means this particular fan has a controller to it. So you can change the um, speed of the fan. Now, the reason this becomes a confusion is because um, if you go over here to the left side and you scroll down, you'll see this airflow, right? Well they show that the highest is 65 to 70 CFM, but we know that's not true because we just checked the specifications for this fan right up here. Now watch what happens when I click on it. Notice it only shows the lead one, the one that had 66.3. That's where confusion comes in because this one, the one without lead, is clearly higher in CFM at 82.9, but because it's a controller-based fan, it's not gonna show. So what you have to do is always, always double check um, what you're looking at over here, because otherwise that will happen to you. Now, uh, on the note of um, case fans, I do want to bring up the lower profile fans. Uh, this isn't a good one, but I am just using it as an example. Now, depending on what case you're working with, some CPU coolers like that may not fit. If that happens, you may have to resort to a low profile one like this. If that happens, one of the things that you can do to deal with that is upgrade your case fans. Um, the case fans will sort of help. It won't help as much as having a good CPU cooler, but it can help enough to where the CPU fan cooler um, may not be much of a factor anymore, if that makes sense. So the way you would do that is you go through um, Newegg or one of those sites and look for a brand name fan and just do the same thing over again. Look for CFM rating. Go as high as you can within reason. A lot of the um, high CFM fans for the case uh, will make a lot of noise. It will indicate how loud it is in the specifications sheet. So for example, I have a first PC core um, rear fan uh, for my older case, which is housed in the MD Phenom. 
that one is well over 100 CFM, but it also happens to be 60 decibels loud at its max speed. It's a 5,000 RPM fan, if I remember right. So that's just an example of what to look for um, when it comes to um, the case fans. When it comes to CPU fans, you don't have to worry about noise because they're not really that loud. I have yet to see one that ever goes past 35 decibels. And if there is one, as long as it's not over 40, it's fine. Right, so with all that um, talked about, let's just briefly sidetrack into another confusion that I want to bring up, because this kind of relates to the websites and uh, things. Um, motherboards. So PC Part Picker is a really popular website uh, for people to come and, you know, check a build out and uh, see if it works for them, right? Well, the biggest problem with this and some of the other websites is you'll notice I pulled up a motherboard, just some random motherboard that's 1151 socket, because uh, that's where the 6700K is. Um, and it's a Asus Rogue Maximus VI Hero Alpha ATX. So I'm going to scroll down, and you'll notice that it says memory type, and it lists all these speeds right here that I've highlighted. It says it can go all the way up to 3866. But what we're going to do to show you where the confusion is, we're going to go to the ACES website for this motherboard. So you notice I pulled it up over here, and this is how you would do it if you were searching on your own. Um, I, I clicked on the motherboard section, and I went through the little searches. I clicked Rogue Republic of Gamers because it's a Rogue motherboard, socket 1151, and it pulled up this list. So I'm obviously double-checking to see if there's any others that have the Hero Alpha name attached to it, whether it be version 1, version 2, because that can sometimes happen in a motherboard listing. However, there isn't one in this case. So I recognize very quickly that this is the motherboard I'm looking for. So you'll notice I pulled this up, and we're going to go check for specifications. Now look at how different the list is. Yes, it does go up to 3866, but what does it say? Overclock, OC, in parentheses. So this motherboard can only go past 2133 megahertz of RAM speed if it overclocks. So there's your other confusion, people. You have to be absolutely careful with how you shop. This is what I did for seven years as a freelancer. I did nothing but read specification sheets and see if these parts are worth the money of the people I worked with. You too can get up on that level if you just take the time to read. I guarantee you, building a PC is at least 90% reading, 10% technical. You know why? Because all you do is read technical sheets and reviews and benchmarks. They're the only three things I ever check when I build a PC. And then once I've checked those, then, of course, the shopping factor comes in. I have to find where the low prices are and all that. But the main bulk of my work is right there between those three. So all you have to do is get that down, and you'll have the same skill set that I have had for the last seven years. Does that help everybody? I hope it does. That's all I got. Thanks for listening.